What's going on, boys and girls? It's your pal right here, the one and only Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Eyes Rail, Lee Sanders, coming at you with a honest, brutally honest, I might add, review of the new Foo Fighters album, Sonic Highways. If you haven't checked out the album yet and you're a little bit curious, you are in the right place. For those of you that do have the album, after you get done checking out this review, everybody, I would love for you all to interact with us. Let me know what you thought about the album. Post those comments down below. You can also find us out on Twitter at the RCWR Show. Facebook at Infinity One Productions. Make sure you share this. You could do so a number of ways by Facebooking, Google Plusing, retweeting. Always one of the best ways you can spread the word about our content. If you're new, really, we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button. We're always doing a little bit of everything when it comes to doing some really fun and insightful reviews, or we're kicking back and we're actually chatting it up with somebody. We do a little bit of everything, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, so Foo Fighters' new studio album, Sonic Highways. What can I say about this album off the break? Well, for those of you that need a little bit of a background to this new album, this is Foo Fighters' follow-up to 2011's Wasting Light, as it also marks the second time that Butch Vick has came in to produce the album now you guys should definitely be familiar with butch vick he's infamous for producing the nevermind album by nirvana also he has his own respected band which has been around for a good minute probably one of the most underrated alternative rock bands there is that's out there of course i'm talking about garbage love garbage man the, that band just kicks ass but uh we see butch vick come back and everything and uh, for that Nevermind album, by the way, 1991. So kudos to those of you guys that remember getting that album the year and date that it came out. I definitely remember where I was when I had got that album. Now, you know, as far as the concept goes for Sonic Highways, this eighth studio album, you know, there's usually some type of an idea that Dave Grohl and the rest of the band form as they go in in as they go in to try to record this album so take for instance what happened with 2011's wasting light dave grow had basically decided you know what let's record this album in my garage and let's kind of go back to the traditional way of recording an album so it ended up uh, seeing or correction it ended up being the case where the album uh, was recorded with analog equipment something that's abandoned in today's standards as everything is normally computerized and everything you can pretty much do everything with computer computer software and all that they went back to basics those of you that have picked up the Foo Fighters Wasting Light album at your local stores you definitely remember seeing that sticker saying recorded from Dave's garage and on analog equipment i'm sure you guys remember if not yeah now you know and no one's have the battle but you think about that then you think about what had came about with 2007's echoes silence and patience as that was recorded in dave's basement and then you kind of go a little bit more further back than that you go to 2002's One by One, where the album was recorded actually in two different states. It was recorded in Virginia and California. So you're keeping all that in mind and you're saying to yourself, well, for a band that's been around for just about 20 years, how do you continue to stay relevant? How do you continue to stay fresh? We all can be in agreement, those of us that have been Foo Fighter fans for a long time, even the purest and most hardcore Foo Fighter fan, I think we can all be in agreement that a lot of times Foo Fighter songs, they sound the same. You can take something from like 2002 and it sounds like something that might have came out by today's standards with the exception of what the band did with Wasting Light as they went really dark, gritty, it was a reflection on all the life experiences that Dave had up to that point as the album was being made. It was definitely a more personal type of album. With Sonic Highways, the concept to this one, this go round is, okay, well, let's maybe do something that really hasn't been done before, at least for 
a very popular North American band, which is to record in various different cities, record new music in various cities. And the end result is eight tracks on Sonic Highways as they had recorded in Los Angeles. Uh, they also had recorded in Nashville, Washington, D.C. Shout out to my fellow D.C., Maryland, Virginia natives. Uh, New Orleans, Seattle, New York City, Austin, Texas. Uh, and the way that they went about documenting their journeys, they actually had worked in conjunction with HBO and the Late Night Show with David Letterman as uh, he has a production company of his own called Worldwide Pants. Uh, we basically had saw a mini series which you can catch on HBO or HBO On Demand between now and December 5th, uh, which shows the band on their journey recording through various cities. For those of you that haven't seen this documentary series yet, this eight part mini series, I'm not going to give any spoilers away i just highly suggest that you check you check it out because as you're experiencing what the band is going through with the history of that city that they're in leading up to the music being recorded you can't kind of help but say to yourself okay well it's nice to see that the band is trying to conjure up some type of energy some type of passion to go into that respected studio for that city and take everything that they've learned as far as the history goes and all that and you can really feel it in that single track but unfortunately i think that's where the whole concept kind of comes a little bit thin now some of you guys that may not even be familiar with the Foo Fighters traveling to various cities to record this album. You haven't seen the HBO documentary series, but you've heard about the concept. Some of you may be disappointed for the simple fact. I know there was only but maybe two tracks I came across from this album. I really didn't want to hear any more tracks until I actually had the entire whole album in its entirety so that I could really judge. But from the little bit that I heard from the first two tracks that I came across, it was kind of like, well, seems like this is something that's definitely going to be a grab. As I was really hoping that for this album, the band was going to go in a direction where, okay, well, you know, with regards to DC, you, you think of Bad Brains. There's a lot of punk in your face uh, uh, type of bands that you think of when you think of punk rock, punk grunge rock and all of that in DC and you know so you can hear that on one of the tracks but take for example when they go to Nashville everybody knows that when it comes to Nashville a lot of big country acts are out there you're kind of saying to yourself okay well maybe there's going to be a country song and then you see they're going to Los Angeles maybe they're going to try to channel a little bit of Red Hot Chili Peppers on that particular track you don't really get that instead what you get is an album of which some of the tracks are good and some of the tracks are bad now looking at the track listing here for you guys let's cut to the chase all right i definitely love how the album opens up with something for nothing love that i love how the second track follows uh which is what they recorded in washington dc Bad Brains does make a guest appearance on this track. The Feast and the Femaine, definitely on point. Congregation, I kind of thought it really shouldn't have been on the album. Uh, what Did I Do? God Is My Witness, decent track. Uh, Outside, that's another one that really stood out in my mind. The last two tracks of the album, Subterrian, and I Am The River, great slow ballad tracks. I'm sure some of you guys that have listened to enough Foo Fighters, you kind of know exactly what you can expect from a Foo Fighters song, which is basically okay. You got the little guitars coming in, they're doing their thing. Then Dave Grohl comes in, he sounds all nice and kind of quiet. Then he starts yelling. They kind of abandon that. I think Dave kind of knows that over the course of many albums, they've kind of been doing the same thing so 
on this album you can really genuinely tell that they're trying to switch it up in a big way but you know I just couldn't help but feel a little bit disappointed with the way they approached this album not truly the concept I was picturing seems like they were so caught up on visiting different cities that in the process of all that what really got lost was really trying to stay true to the different type of music that they all were inspired by to really make it bleed out on these songs that they're doing and like I said there's probably only one track that really kinda captures in a bottle brilliantly I think uh, which is the Feast and the Femaine really captures what was going on uh, during the period in the maybe 70s, 80s, maybe early 90s or what was going on in punk slash grunge rock and all that. But you got about a little over 42 minutes on this album. I would honestly tell you guys, if you're a hardcore Foo Fighters fan, you know, and you just want to represent, you want to show your support for the band, I'd say check it out. But if you're a passive Foo Fighters fan, I would say wait to get this album. I think what would probably make this album be even more worthwhile to get is if they ever release a box set where you'll get the Sonic Highways album, maybe you'll get a couple of B-sides or some acoustic versions of some of the music that's on this album to accompany the eight-part documentary series that they did with HBO. I think if you can hold out, do that. Keeping in mind that the last Sonic Highways episode will air the first week of December, I really wouldn't be too surprised if maybe before the end of January or maybe early February, they might release some type of a box set. I would say if you can wait, definitely make it worth your while. At least that way you won't have to go back out, spend your money again. I mean, here's hoping that the Sonic Highways documentary series is released separately, but I'm just kind of thinking from that marketing standpoint that it would probably make a little bit more sense to maybe just box it up the way I said earlier. That way they can try to entice more people that might have already just got the CD to come up out their pockets again and get that nice little deluxe set. I know some of you guys may be a little bit irritated if Foo Fighters were to kind of go that route. I think if Dave can have any type of a say with regards to that, he may try to see if it can be set up in a way where it's separate so that if you already have the album, you can just get the documentary series. But again, to recap, you're a hardcore Foo Fighters fan, if you want to represent, go ahead. If you're a passive Foo Fighters fan, like I said, wait it out. Overall, I give this album out of... Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. Out of five stars, I got to give this album probably a three. A three out of five. So if you're looking at it from like a scale of one to five, I actually would give it like... A six out of ten I would love to hear your thoughts about this album as once again the standout tracks for this is something from from nothing the feast and the Femain, subter subterranean yeah that's a tongue twister subterranean and I am the river uh, those were my favorite standout tracks what were your favorite standout tracks for those of you that listen to the entire album and what did you think about the album overall did it really live up to your expectations or were you let down post those comments down below and hey man we've got the concert of valor that's going to be happening tomorrow right here in the washington dc area on veterans day shout out to anybody that's going to be going over there to check it out i unfortunately am not going to be able to go there because i'm going to be working and I'm actually going to be spending some private time with the family afterwards. But Dave Grohl is going to be there. He's going to be performing. Metallica is going to be performing. Bruce Springsteen is going to be performing. Carrie Underwood. I mean, it's just going to be totally kick-ass. If you aren't going to be able to go see it down at the National Mall, you got the next best thing, which is you'll be able to check it out on HBO and I believe on some of your local uh, affiliate channels, local uh, 
outlets like NBC, Fox, CBS, whatever. So check your local listings for that. And in the meantime, that's going to do it. Hey, if this is your first time checking us out, love to have you subscribe to us so you never miss out all the great content we do for you here on a weekly basis. We also have some great live radio slash podcast episodes that you can check out all the links you need is in this episode description so check it out one more time make sure you give this a like share it a number of ways by google plusing facebooking retweeting as always it's one of the many ways you can spread the good word about our content till next go around please be safe and most importantly be kind to one another adios